say that someone watching or maybe their parents are starting to sh show signs of early onset, could the diet reducing that insulin load help? Maybe, maybe it's reverse. And then secondly, if not reverse, at least stop or mitigate some of the continuous degeneration. Absolutely. So if, if, if an energy, uh, uh, shortage is causing your brain cells to die, bridging that energy gap with ketones is really, that is the magic of the ketogenic diet. That's where the ketogenic diet really shines because there is no other source of energy that you that is going to work. You putting more glucose into the system, eating more sugar is not going to solve this problem because the more sugar you eat, <laughs> the, the higher your insulin levels will be. And the higher your insulin levels are, paradoxically, the harder it's going to be for insulin to cross into the brain as the brain becomes more and more insulin resistant. Right. So you can have a brain swimming in a sea of glucose, the sugar waltzes in, no questions asked. That's not the problem. It's not a lack of glucose. It's a lack of insulin. So you can have a brain swimming in a sea of glucose and still be slowly starving to death because the insulin is having a harder and harder time getting in. So as upside down as it sounds, as counterintuitive as it sounds, the, the, the sugarier your diet is, the harder it's going to be for your brain to turn that sugar into energy. You need an alternative. You need a, uh, you need a supplemental fuel source that uh, can cross into the brain easily and that doesn't require insulin for a lot of insulin for processing. And that's ketones. So when ketones cross into the brain, they burn beautifully in a low insulin environment. So now you can bridge that energy gap and whatever cells may have been struggling to get by on not quite enough energy can come back online. And I think this is why we see uh, not only multiple case reports now, some published in, 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 in books and in, in, in journals and uh, case reports in our own clinical practices. I've included one in the book and can tell you about more if you like, uh, there that we now see in clinical practice that it is possible for people within a matter of days to weeks to start to feel clear, clearer in their minds, uh, to, to improve their cognitive testing, to reverse years of, of memory decline, even in some very severe cases. And this is not just my work, it's also um, the work of Dr. Annette Bosworth, who, who published a beautifully documented case report of um, Alzheimer's reversal using a ketogenic diet. It's the work of Dr. Dale Bredesen, who has published a number of books on this topic. He uses very complicated protocols for Alzheimer's disease, but the, the cornerstone of all of those protocols is the ketogenic diet. In Alzheimer's disease, you have an energy deficit in most cases, and, and really the only uh, fuel source that is going to rescue those brain cells uh, is, is ketones. Yeah, so exogenous ketones are really interesting because uh, yes, they do, uh, depending on the type you're using, yes, they do raise, uh, they can raise ketone levels substantially, particularly the esters. Uh, so there are salts, esters, and then there's pure DBHB, uh, purified uh, uh, ketone supplements. And, you know, these are quite expensive and they only last in the bloodstream a maximum of two hours. So there are certainly a lot of, you know, limitations to these exogenous ketones and some of them taste absolutely <laughs> atrocious. But in any case, they, they can uh, help bridge that energy gap because they are ketones and they cross the blood brain barrier and they can serve as a source of energy for brain cells. So it makes sense that they're being explored. They have been explored for uh, cognitive impairment and for dementia. And there are some glimmers of hope there in terms of exogenous ketones. Again, lots of limitations there. But there, but a couple of cautions, I would say, you know, really for people who have no other choice or they're in a, they're in a situation, say they're in a living situation, they're, they're living in uh, assisted living or in a, or in a, a long-term care facility where they don't have a lot of control over their diet or their cognitive impairment is already so far along that they really can't manage a dietary change, remember, or learn new rules for how to eat. Or let's say they can't, um, uh, or let's say they don't want to change, change their diet. Um, Exogenous ketones would definitely then be your best option, but again, they're going to be expensive. They right. they only work for a couple of hours, that sort of thing. But the real problem, the the biggest limitation with exogenous ketones is that they can't normalize your glucose and insulin levels. Okay. So 
if you are, uh, and that's what's causing the damage in the first place. Right. So what you're doing is kind of you know, adding a kind of expensive band aid mm -hmm. to a situation where where the the damage is still ongoing underneath. The high glucose and insulin levels are still damaging the brain. It's just that the exogenous ketones are uh, giving you a little bit of symptom relief um, while that process is marching forward underneath.